that present day fancies tell proud story. Days of yore fond in battle danced, of olden times regaled in glory. Far sighted Aegean heroes glanced, heroines in chanting beauty danced, feelings full of another moral age, against our own narrowly distanced. High minded decadence suffuses rage, undignified rantings provoke us, turn the page. Uncertainty of a future life has no bearing on an opponent's fight. Many noble souls unrepenting strife. Each attempt descends into darkest night. Every free spirit in chain denied sight of passions took us away from that bond. Servitude has no knot of wrong or right. Deep embittered patience still remain fond. For conceptual beauty, we forever longed. Then as now, stumbling through an era, eventually to go by the name, a classical age, Apollo's lair, or affinities holding true the same, reminiscences most have always been tame, followers few deserve remembrance. Those who invent another type of game Set the dice rolling until decadence Misuse cultural riches through fat opulence All institutions plagiarize anew Give ethical clarity sense denied The family where sons and daughters grew Was founded on a stone deep red blood dyed Against the instincts obligingly lied. Suit propriety, avoid provocation. True love is passion, forgotten, pushed aside. Deadly union, honors destitution. Mutual wealth poached into cold extinction. Our world is abound with divine pretenses that have always sought to hold their harsh sway. Divide unequally raising fences To show who is banished and who can stay Invoking difference between those who'd say That we have no quarrel with each other, no Rather they would try to keep us at bay Final indictment their weak powers show Lofty in abundance, yet spiritually low High-minded princes, bravery's fountain, not always the case we see poets told. Men suspicious, unbelieving, doubting, mythology cut off in days of old. The relevance that such tales should hold over disparity of meager ways. Not caring for eloquence unless sold, something fit to while away idle days. The genius among us begrudgingly displays. The now ruined city of Mycenae was once founded by Perseus of fame, who rode the winged horse elegantly, and the snakes of Medusa's hair did tame. He brought low the kraken, that very same, threat to Andromeda, African bride whose former suitor he was forced to maim. Only the haughtiness of such Greek pride could indulge romantic rivalry to be set aside. The house of Perseus soon did give way to Atreus's, like old dynasties, that hardly can last when led far astray. Power always needs must vain niceties lest people below test its frailties 
and dare to shed the blood for such a crime. Only the lofty insecurities who consider their problems more sublime and for the angst of the many haven't the time. Kings can be remembered by words and deeds and Atreus as we know followed suit. Devious butchery the path to greeds mad craving the state coffers he did loot while holding a pinion beneath his boot fathered two young sons who'd even outdo his own despicable vice a deep root of wretched corruption had therein grew Agamemnon and Menelaus they the two brothers looking to further their domains Marry sisters equal in chastity. One rules Mycenae, one in Sparta reigns. Perfect vision of royal harmony. Set aloof to an Orphic symphony, till marital discord of course results. In husband's scorn, resort to armory. Harsh bronze, the brutal payback for insults of Paris, Helen, and Aphrodite's gentle cults. Hardly impractical, Helen wants back in her place at Menelaus's side, set to make up for all the former lack of love he'd had his comrades who died below the walls of Troy and supplied a metaphor of frustrated desire. Helen, ever the seductive queen, lied and won over his hapless, unquenched fire, weaving her way, exalting him all the higher. There is a rupture, a moment of bleak, empty wilderness, a time lost to all, before whence all idealists did seek to test their skills unprepared for the fall. The house of old Mycenae's blood-drenched hall, familiar bonds not always so dear. A king, though in stature, may be quite tall. Orestes is doomed to complacently hear Furies cry for lifeblood, his lineage clear. Tell me, how could any such Delphic bard make song of Sparsion's austerity, when even muses themselves find it hard, the act of fine vocal dexterity? Long gone are days of kind sincerity, a feature so common among equals. Fully knowing harsh pending levity, that weight of a Bronze Age that now appalls, the pending curtain call which upon greatness falls. Orestes, son of family dispute, to whom it fell the burden of vengeance, against his own kindred to raise his boot, blot out the life that gave him essence. Electra, too, in his sister's presence, brought down retribution on his own head. Furies sought unrepenting repentance. They drove him forth to Athens, where it said, Trial by reason, passion sued and put to bed. Barely come of age, the soft hairy down of his chin still smooth, quite easily seen. Such youth commits matricide for the crown. For Clytemnestra's end, he was too keen. The hot-headed impatience of a teen brought about further dynastic shift. She having been in turn also too mean, Orestes merely repeating to lift the knife by which his father too was set adrift. Hardly avoidable his destiny, punish a mother of so little love. For a husband long lost at war away, Agamemnon returning felt her shove. His war-weary personage from above, down into Hades' his waters thereabout. Polluted bloodshed the peace of a dove, long since denied during Troy's tragic rout. Likewise, nobody cared for his own final shout.
Despite his depravity, such an act, the duty of honor should deserve praise. To avenge a father who had lacked nothing to a son which should amaze. Agamemnon's vengeance he obeys. A brother and sister seem justified. Forgetting that father's very own craze, Iphigenia, their sibling once sighed. Ritual sacrifice, the Greek cause obliged. What a farce tragic theatre has but made. Epic myth set to vulgar applause. Degrading stories celebrities played. Any rendering true or not to laws. Of traditional dogma flouting flaws. Contemporary adaptions no respect. For source material, morals and mores. Left dull and lifeless, fully inept. Devoid of content, entertainment we accept. Greek tragedians were as bad as any, tinkering with myth to follow their will. Iphigenia found alive many, plainly thought, what's the point of such a hill? If back from the dead, that land of the dim, anyone comes, fitting plots make a mess. She turned up in Taurus, or so they sing. What enmity, for her sake bitterness, had bled generations of pointless prolonged stress. Yet to all things soon come a time of peace, or stagnation, whatever you call it. Times of imagination come to cease. Stories of grandeur no longer seem fit. Tales of valor, strength, iron, and grit gave way to a dark age which not to tell. Orestes' legacy obscurely lit. Life lived beyond its means may often nail line from the heights into ignorance and hell. Helen, let's not forget, had a daughter by Menelaus before having fled. Hermione for many a winter, while her parents quarrel at Troy bled. Waited, Eripides' passion has said, that the girl grew refined yet lecherous. Neoptolemus fought for her soft bed against Orestes for the dangerous, bride fitting prize for the cunningly murderous. Neoptolemus, that son to surpass, exploits of his father, lord of the dead. Swift footed Achilles, yes, he the mass, murderer who to hungry hounds had fed. Priam's son, Hector, the one who had led. Troy's only hope, defiance resistant. The sun won Andromache, who still shed. Tears for fine Hector, her husband distant. Indulging the Optolemus, not an instant. He was such a match for his father, plus. The same instinct for ruthless savagery. He also goes by the name of Thyrus. Sure to an appellation, you'll agree. The Neoptolemus, I'm sure you'll see. It's intolerable to use again. Too many syllables, bad poetry. Half a line gone, if you count up to ten. A scribe's got to limit the use of his pen. Well, Hermione, like I was saying, wasn't too pleased by the sordid idea of a rival, Thyrus, heart straying. She was quite happy to stand by and cheer, as Phyrus fought Orestes, we now hear. For her own love, yes, those men can sweat. But against the slave, Andromache dear, she saw nothing more than a foreign threat. Compassion for the vanquished, unlearned as of yet. All this envy, though soon came to nothing, it's often the case in confusing myths. Grand eloquence we find somehow soothing, just as we gossip over lovers' tiffs. So what happened next? There are many ifs. Ancient sources are always vague and sparse. History is full of bores, squares, and stiffs, repeating, reliving the same old farce. At least here you've got the plain original dance. 
There's one thing of which we can be sure. Thyrus made his way to the Delphic Shrine. Above Mount Parnassus, below Azure. Skies of central Greece, now in sad decline. But then in its heyday, high in its prime. There by Apollo's columns of marble. Doric in stature and encased in lime. The stones by which Aristides would gamble. Hermione's hand in open bloody battle. Here wanton poets really meet their test, gore-soaked stanzas not for the faint-hearted. Yet tragedy puts action off stage lest crowds listened as eloquence departed. Maybe that's why I just can't get started on unavoidable confrontation. The clash of bronze tell me who'll be martyred Warriors without ill hesitation. Lovers of these fine arts would show indignation. Off with Hermione, his promised wife. Hardly worth repeating, Orestes won. Thyrus, like father, threw away his life. He'd fought desperately, yet all he'd done was upset Apollo, spoil his fun who'd favored Orestes long since the days when he'd begged sanctuary on the run for murdering his mother in a craze. Thus the archer god shows benignity, Homer says. After his ordeals, Orestes went back to his homeland pacified and won. Ruled over his people a landed gent, accepting his mastery he'd begun to rule by decree and to blindly shun the needs of a people little heeded. He hired politicians who then spun any old mantra that kept motives hid, ignoring what poverty and hunger pleaded. In little time, the whole Peloponnese was united, bowing down at his feet. Mycenae flourished in a time of ease. Agamemnon's son did grander a feat than in those old times of his father's seat, all wasted on foreign intervention. Wars were won, but bringing homebound defeat. People neglected of education, invest not in the future, but segregation. Rebellious streak fiercely indignant, the Greeks have had since those forgotten days. Filled their streets with oratory and chant, they forgive little of abusive ways. A spirit hardly willing never pays to passively look on as the corrupt try their tricks, saying it's only a phase. Squeeze the economy, ruin, disrupt. Our swindled hopes brought to an end abrupt. Untolerated, a tyrant returns in yet another form more sleekly clad with ways to pilfer what the worker earns always devious, malicious and glad rejoicing to take away all they had while daring to say it's his divine right only common people recognize bad but never cease to dream what's far from sight never lower their heads nor wallow in their plight